I'm, Brand, I'm Brandon Big B Hickman, um, programming for Coast 97.3 Wilmington, North Carolina. And better as possible. And better as possible. I'm DJ Kashim. Uh, my new name is Kashim Remix. There's a story behind that, but I'm DJ Kashim. So just uh, chill. DJ Extraordinaire. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say world famous, but at least. World famous, yeah. Shit, man. So say it. Like, <laughs> how you tell me about the money? Say it. Well, grateful. We grateful. <laughs> world humble. World grateful. We grateful. All right, and I'm just start with, and I, I think I sent both of y'all, but this so first is just some kind of like icebreaker question to get y'all talking, which, which y'all don't think is gonna be a big issue, but still. So what what did y'all listen to on the way over here? I think you probably wouldn't listen to anything. It's not mm-hmm. like you're on the phone call. No, actually, I listened to um, the Last Ross album. I like that. I like that album. That's what's in my car right now. Mm-hmm. So you listening to Rick Ross and Rick Rose? Rose. Yeah, yeah, I listen to some seventies funk music, man. Listen to seventies funk music, man. Okay. I'm on, I'm on this breakbeat era now, like listening to the old music versus what they doing to the new music and and running them together doing the set. That's where I'm at right now. I'm, I'm loving it. Samples, you like the stuff that was sampled. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just listening to old stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Brandon, what was the what was the first car that you ever wanted to purchase? The very first car I wanted to purchase, man, and I still want it, was a Samurai Suzuki. Because hmm. uh, it used to be a group back in the day called the Fun Boys in Wilmington. <laughs> and uh, some of them had Suzuki's, the Samurai Suzuki's. I guess it was like a Z28 and some other stuff. Um, so that was something I looked, I wanted because I always looked up to those guys, the Fun Boys. Um, um, Ronnie Waddell and all those cats that was doing doing numbers. Okay, was that the fun boys of like a hip hop group or? Um, like not. I think they just was a crew. I mean, I, I'm not gonna consider them a gang because it wasn't like that. They just, you know, they threw parties. They had fun. Um, they was an in crowd at school. It was a business. They, they were a business. They, they were was, old, they, they they was was older business. than me. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> can business. tell you, yeah, can tell yeah, they was a business. But they, I mean, flyers, whips, high schoolers. Yeah, these are high schoolers with new cars. You know what I mean? Or near new cars. But those are things I was like, oh man, I want that because they had to fly. I like to call them black rims. banks. They, black were, banks. They, were, they were businessmen, black yeah. banks. They were walking banks. Yeah. <laughs> but that yeah. that's what attracted me to that because they some of them had the Samurai Suzuki's and I was like, yo, I'm about to get me. I was on eBay looking for one. Like the old job. <laughs> they was actually official people too. They were good people, man. Yeah. yeah. I think it was... Uh, you say Rodney, Steve, Steve, Steve yeah, yeah. Pope, all that. They, they were good people, man. Yeah. Still good people right now to the day. Good people, man. The fun boys. The, because you know, I, I do the, the, I got the IG page, Hip Hop Rides, before I just going to incorporate what we're doing now. And I, I posted, is it the, what's the other Samurai? Is the Samurai Suzuki? Uh, the Migo? Yeah, Migo's the one I'm too. The Migo. So the Migo was by, by, was it somebody else? Um, the same people, by Honda, not Honda. Mr. Rodeo. Uh, Rodeo. Yeah, Rodeo. Rodeo, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's past, past, past the, the Samurai. So, yeah, Samurai Suzuki, then you had the. The Rodeo was the passport. You, know, you just had a Jeep Wrangler. Just yeah, Ro- you know. Rodeo was a passport, but Honda. Honda had the passport. Oh, the Samurai. 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 Suzuki Samurai. Samurai. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah, Suzuki yeah. Samurai, and then there's a, the. What's the little one then with the, the rag top? There was two of them. Yeah, it was just a smaller version of that. One of my dudes used to have one. This kid named Tony Anderson, man. We used to mm-hmm. ride around that thing. He had a white one. Is that that Hollywood? Was, that just was bad. Nah, Tony Anderson. Tony Anderson. This is the cool, cool brother, man. Cool brother. He had one. Um. So when y'all when y'all get into like a a new ride, like say you renting something or you just brought a new whip. What's like? What's one of the first things you want to? What do you Christian your 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 car with? Like, what what's the first thing that you you play? Is that, do you have like a go to artist song type of music? I'm not sure. I don't. I don't really have a song, but I do test the I do test the sound system. It's probably the first thing I do. I look at the uh, what's the name, man? The um the satellite radio. 
Because mm. I don't have satellite radio in my regular car. So if I run a car or something like that, I'm like, let me see what they got going on. Mm -hmm. Then I might hear old song. I'm like, oh, I need to play that. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. <laughs> I'm like, yo. Then I might find a station. I'm like, oh, okay. Memory. Bam, bam. But then I'd be like, I want to buy the car. Like, I just drove a Cherokee, a Limited. And I looked up one. I'm going to get one. We're going to get one of them. Damn, serious, boy. Your grand yeah. Cherokee that, or that, record that record. grand Cherokee is serious. Yeah. <laughs> I got a record. <laughs> All the bells and whistles. What? Oh, yeah. yeah. Man, I just rented one of them things. And I let my girl see it. My girl was like, yo, I like this. Yeah. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> oh, Lord. So let's go get to the, the nitty gritty. So do y'all do y'all feel that So do y'all feel that hip hop and car culture are connected, and you know why, why not? One hundred percent connected. I mean, when you talk about history, sure you, you incorporate the question. Oh yeah, uh, car culture and and hip hop are one hundred percent connected. I mean, you got to look at is is how we dress, how we talk, how we walk, what we're riding in. You know, we're putting. If you think about late eighties, early nineties, we're putting. Uh, the car inside the song. Inside the song. You know, mm -hmm. you know booming in the Jeeps. LL Cool J. The, you know, <laughs> uh, now they got a Jetta, like all types of records yeah. that we're, we're incorporating cars that we liked in our culture inside to records. And now people are like, yo, let me get that. You know what I mean? For, for us to look at New Jack City and they in a Jeep Wrangler. The, yeah. In the beginning, they're in a Jeep in Wrangler. Jeep of Wrangler. course, they... They graduate the limousine, but I'm saying when it starts off, they're in the Jeep Wrangler. That's nitty gritty in the city. I, I really feel that way. Uh, that was a big record. And, and, and this is not being racism, but we used to call them the white boy Jeep. Like, yo, Wally, a white boy Jeep, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people was on it. Because that's who pretty much could afford it, unless you were selling drugs or doing music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For me, uh, I think from for the culture itself, yeah, the cars or whatever, but man, just being in the culture, man, I never got to that yet about the cars or whatever. I think it was just being hungry of being part of the culture, and then maybe later on down the line, that would be the fruits of me getting it. So some individuals might be like really fighting for the culture, really trying to perfect the craft and not really worrying about that. But that's just a, that's a byproduct, and it's also a product. The chain, the sneakers, the girls, mm -hmm. the car, the crib, the money. And it was a missing element that was missing. I'm coming, a uh, missing element from that was the long-term investments. That was the missing element. And a lot of a lot of brothers and sisters that were doing music that had mm -hmm. millions of dollars uh, or had close to a million dollars or a couple hundred thousand, which was equivalent to millions of dollars at that time. You know, the, the long-term investments. That was the missing element. I feel like that. People are doing a better job incorporating that now. Oh, yeah. Oh, they ain't playing no games now. I, I, yeah, they are. <laughs> they make more money on the investments and the side stuff than they do doing the music. Doing the music. They doing yeah. the music for fun. Now. Yeah, that's <laughs> fun. So, y'all kind of touched on this, but uh, go more into the detail. Is there like a, a favorite uh, hip-hop artist that you that's about a vehicle or make you think of a car or a car that might make you think of a certain song, like hip-hop song? Y'all can take your time. I like I like listening to Jay Z. That's my dude. When he start rapping about cars, man, ah, you know what I'm saying? You just you can just see yourself in it when he be laughing about the Lex Coops and all that. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like, yo, he yeah, down, Jay. That's crazy. Ah. I didn't really have a, a specific car that I heard in the record, but the songs, like I remember, it's like the year I forgot what year it was, but we you, you're getting your your license or your getting your permit that year and uh summertime comes out by will smith yeah. which is a great record right and it starts off with the ah, boom yo i remember riding around and i know this wasn't big for everybody but we had like a chevette yeah with the with the the bass cannon in the back, back. Oh man, the hat is back. The shit, I had one, the Chevy's back. Blue. Oh, my mom yeah. had one, man. I, I drove that. Boy. And then, so you know, in the record, <laughs> in the record, it says yeah. two miles an hour. So everybody see you. Yeah. Where can we do that at? So we're riding MLK Center, Summer League. Yeah. You just riding around the loop. Then you go yeah. around the block, then you come back into the parking lot, ride around the loop. And then you, you do that until it. Everybody go home. Hey, my man. Had Same that, record. Hey, what was that Volkswagen hatchback name? My man had one. Was it a Golf or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. he had a, co 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 
No, one of them he had the green. The, the rabbit. The rabbit. Yo, he, yeah. had, he had a rabbit. He had the green jump with the back. He had a lot of system in women. I know you're talking about the green. Had, the green hats back and he popped that joke up. You can hear that joke. He hit the Walmart. System. It was a house system. Yeah, he wasn't playing no games. It was like, a house system. Yeah, he he play, play, I know he exactly what you're talking about. That joke was loud. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if he can hear now. <laughs> it was for real. Because you can hear him coming. Like, yeah, oh, I wonder if he can hear that's now. That's the man in the Volkswagen. Yeah. Um. When was it, when was when did you first hear Easy E Boys in the Hood? I think I, I what year that got that was like high school when that came out. When it came out, eighty seven, right? Yeah, I was in. Yeah, yeah, I was in. I was running around with polka dot uh, pants on and dancing with a with a high top fade with. Uh, that was way before. That was way before the high top. Blonde hair. Nah. nah. I thought it was, that they, was right there. They that were was, just still wearing. That curls. was West Coast. They were still wearing Jerry curls. That East Coast was was, was with the, the, the cheese wedge, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm in high school when that came out. I was man. in middle. I was in middle school. Like, well, at that time, it wasn't even middle school. It was junior high. So you know, you went from kindergarten to sixth grade. That's elementary. And seven, eight, nine was junior high. So I was like in seventh grade um, when that record job. I remember having the tape, and it was almost like listening. Um, what? Yeah, they, not, neither one of y'all said what the record we're talking about. Is. Oh, Easy E Boys, Boys in the Hood. Yeah, <laughs> Easy E Boys in the Hood. I, I remember almost having to hide and listen to it, like oh, yeah. Richard Pryor tapes. It was an omen. You know what I'm saying? Because you got, I mean, they cussing. It wasn't no, there was no clean version at that moment. No filters. So you had to listen to it. It was police. All that's on there. And you just had to listen. Robbing the bank. All that's on there. Yeah. So you had to go. You know, put some find some headphones or something, listen to it low. But we were like, yo, they really saying this? And that was really big. That was like a different different it's a different way of thinking. It totally uh disrupted what East Coast records was. And the bass in them records. Yeah. Man. Ah the bass. At that at that time, did you know what that Impala was? No. I didn't know what Impala was, so they started talking about it. And I could see it on, on, on the videos. I didn't know what Impala was until I saw it. I was like, oh, it was an old car. But then when I saw what they did to it, I was like, oh, okay. So uh, so what were, so what at what time did you know what Impala, like, like when did you like, because he talked about it on the song. I don't think there's no video for Boys in the Hood. So, no. You know, he, he talks about Impala at the time. I guess you don't, you're saying you don't have no reference for it. So then, when when is it did you kind of like see and know what like you know the old school and powers were? Mm. Uh, I I probably knew what the old school Impala was and what it looked like. The Chronic. The, yeah. intro, the introduction of the Chronic. Nice album. Nice album. I mean, nice so album. you get to see what they're doing. You get you you introduced to low riders and kits and um, the hydraulic systems. You know, that's when I start seeing that for real, for real. Like I'm watching TV and it, it's like your bumper hitting the, the cement. Sometimes the bumper's falling off. Like there was some real situations going on. It was some real car situation. The Dayton's, because I'm thinking, oh man, that's old Dayton's. Old man, people wear that. Been had Dayton's, but no, this was a different situation. Even in in films like, um, uh, Mr. Society. When you we are able to see those things, um, what's the other one with, with Jan Jackson, Tupac, t Boys Boy 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 Justice? You Boy seeing Boy the same thing? And in any of the Dr. Dre or, or, or Snoop videos, you you definitely gonna catch it. You gonna see it in Apollo, old Cadillac, old Lincoln. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Um, well, and you're kind of touched on a little bit this when you're talking about the rabbit. So, but in the '90s, how how important was it to have? Uh, 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 a system and um, do you think that had an impact on certain cars being popular? Hmm. Yeah, I think so because it waited uh, it, I think it was important to have a system because that was the area that everybody wanted to have tenant windows, system, the automatic start on the car and then certain cars carry a better sound when you when you the acoustics in the back, Acura Integra's you know, Honda's the golfs. So depending on what type of car you had, isobaric boxes when they were making the boxes that fit to the back of the car, mm -hmm. you know, some Jeeps, you know, the Pathfinder, all that stuff, high hit, you know what I'm saying? Jettas, which hits the best. So yeah, but yeah, that was important. 
trunk wise and everything. Yep. Uh, Jerry's in that. Yeah, I, I think it was very important. I was just talking about when they had the can the base cannon. Mm -hmm. It was called the base cannon. You just put it in the back of mm -hmm. your car and hook it up, and just all it's just mm, that's all came out the back of your car. And uh, then they, they introduced like stabilizers so your trunk wouldn't rattle. Things like that uh, were, were cool. And it kind of, de it definitely, I, I, we were, I was just saying, we were riding in a Chevette. Me and my homeboy, Tremaine, we riding in a Chevette, but it was booming. So it didn't matter. Like we in a Chevette, it's not the best car, but it, it definitely sounded off. I'm going to watch this one fell off. Like, People, we're just, me and him just talking about how people don't really go get a system anymore. Yeah, because, you know, they just want to get a good ride. Yeah. Just, just give, me, give me something high fidelity, man. Yeah, just going to last long. Give me a Harman Kardon or something. Like, give, me, give me something fidelity so I can hear everything that's in there. I want to enjoy it now. Yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. Yeah, because all that loud, a headache, man. By the time all that loud music now, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know for us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the younger generation, yeah. that's not where they, 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 they ain't into that. Now we they, wanted a car, first thing we do, we're going to tent it out. Even yeah. if we got to tent it out, like we go get the tent kit. Yep. Yeah. Put it on the whip and rip it up a little bit. It don't matter with bubbles in it at all, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thing. yeah, they don't do that no more. They don't know the struggle. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, oh, okay, here, let me get it here. Hey, pay for it. You got it. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're going to. Bring it in, bring it in a little bit more, more local. Um, so it seems like Wilmington is like heavily influenced by New York culture, like like more so like how we were just talking about Impalas and stuff. Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody really got an Impala that I know of, unless y'all know of here. Like I mean, like like in, in Wilmington. Why do you think we're more influenced by New York versus like? I, I think I think Wilmington is the Middle East. I mean, you, I really have to say it. Um, I hate saying it like that, but we are the Middle East. Um, if you look at us and where we are at, uh, as far as North Carolina is concerned, but we did what we saw. We did. We we. It's not that we copied the culture, but we did what we saw, uh, or or what we heard. And what you heard was a pipeline 90, 95 to. To, to New that's, York. That's, that's the deal. That's what you had. And you're going to get um, people like, I mean, you got to understand, you had, um, oh my goodness, I'm going to forget the club. Uh, you had, um, what's the club out in the country? New, New World. World. Oh, yeah. So China think City. about, yeah, China City. New World. You think about New World and who they bought early 90s, late 80s. Biggie, you, you got Notorious B.I.G. Kid Tupac, Capri, Craig Mack, Craig Mack, Kid Capri, Capri SNS, Tupac, 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 like Tupac I bought, you got people there. that's Mob all Big, the, Mob, Mob Deep. Deep, everybody was there, so, they were actually there. So now you're being influenced by guys that are influencers in New York, and they're bringing it to, to, to our area. So we're like, yeah, man, yeah, we listen to New York. That's why when, and, and maybe uh, Kai can attest to this, when you have a DJ that comes in, and, and, this, is, and this is just a DJ situation, not even the car. When you have a DJ that comes in, shouts out to my man, um, to my man SNS and and um, DJ Schmoo C and those cats like that from New York that come in and do a guest set. When they was doing guest sets in the club, yeah, they look at us and be like, "Well, I'm gonna play these down south joints." And I'm like, "No, play the up top play, play joints. Up top play joints. the New York joints. They gonna go crazy. <laughs> That's why they're here because mm -hmm. they know you're from New York, and because we can play anything, not." Wilmington is, is a tough. It's tough to play for Wilmington because you can. You need to play the New York records, mm -hmm. and you gotta play the downside. Record. You got to incorporate it incorporate at the same time. Because if you don't, it's gonna be a problem. Think, but you gotta play the New York records. I think the uh, the bigger thing was the crack. The crack scene. Yeah, uh, I can get a, a piece of crack this big in New York, and I can bring it down south and break it into four pieces. And then in doing that, selling the crack or doing whatever you're doing. I didn't ever sell crack. I'm saying I see that the culture shifted. Because more people are like, yo, where the money at? I'm going. And, you know, mm -hmm. you can take a person from where they're from, but you can't take where they're from out of them. And so you were able to see the, sh the clothes, the shoes, you know, the music, and the lifestyle, you know, the, the way people act or whatever. Because, yeah, uh, 10th Street, Jervais, yeah, uh, Million Dollar Block, uh, 2020. That's for uh, real. News, yeah. 
Crack City, like that, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Over there by yeah. Jervey, mm-hmm. where I grew up at, over there by dime. Jervey, yeah. the dime. So yeah, yeah, real, real talk. So I think it's more like the drug thing as well too. But also, like you said, Middle East, you got Florida uh, and and Atlanta and all that down there. Then you got New York, Connecticut, and Virginia, and you got North Carolina right here and Wilmington on the East Coast. Not Raleigh, Greensboro, and Charlotte, but Wilmington on the East Coast, and we got a port here. So that's the pipeline. You know what I'm saying? 95, like you said, it's the pipeline. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that all that culture comes with it. The money, the girls, the cars, and then also the the crazy stuff come with it too. I mean the spade spade, call it what it call it. We got crazy stuff with ourselves too, but all the crazy stuff come with it too. Yeah. You wanna touch on the green MPV? Oh man, so <laughs> without, without 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 going crazy, there there was a, a season where the MPV was crazy. Like the that was a, a nice vehicle. You know what I mean? And it was like a family vehicle, but it then it wasn't. You know? Um, shouts yeah. out to my man Slick, Slick Rod had the MP. And Big Rod. And Slick Big Rod, Rod had the white one and Big, Big Rod had the yellow one. Right, Big Rod yeah. had the, um Keith Rose, shouts to uh, Chef Keith Rose had one. They had one. They yeah. was really on it. You know what I'm saying? But there was there was a time where it was some situations going on. It was a green MPV and people know, some, some people know the story or myth, but it was a problem if they used to, they rock the, the ski racks mm-hmm. and they put the skis on top. And I'm like, yo, these, but the skis was like snow skis. It wasn't, it wasn't like <laughs> the water skis. And so, you know, if, if the skis was pointing forward, everything was cool. Skis pointing backwards. It was time to pick up the skis. If the skis, one ski was this way and one ski was that way, it's trouble. it was a problem. So that's what, that that was a myth, but it was, it was to some degree was, was true, but. The green one was something else. And there was a couple of green ones, but this particular green one was not of, of North Carolina. <laughs> I, was about to, I was about to buy an MPV the other day. I saw one on uh, on Marketplace on Facebook. I'm like, wow. Just get it as a, a like a, a little project car. You know what I'm saying? Get yeah. it, just, give it this, this, like bring it back and make it like something the styles. Yeah. I saw a brother selling one. I was like, oh, an MPV? Mazda? MPV? Okay. Nice. Why do y'all feel the MPV was so, so popular? Like, like you said, like to, to now, an MPV is considered a soccer, a soccer van, a soccer mom car. But back then, woo, yeah, the woo, woo. the woo. I think the woo. And, Jumping out, and of then it. you pull up, and it's about ten cats getting Jumping out, out, out of the MPV. Yeah. Everybody can fit in the MPV. Leaving the side door open. Hey, my man had one too. Noon, remember Noon? Yeah, Red yeah, brother. Noon, noon had one. He had yeah. a nice one too. He had nice. And they, they had nice systems in it and everything. Nice, yeah. You you talking about the uh, epitome of like nine, the mid nineties? You know what I mean? Early mid nineties, and you could do so much more with it. You could color it. You could kit it. Um, you could mm-hmm. take the seats out and just the whole back row mix back, system. Yeah, whole, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so those, right. those are things that you could do to that. And it wasn't like the car was super expensive no. to to get. And that was one good thing about it. But you could make it look expensive. Mm-hmm. And it was good on gas. Yeah. Who so who who so I just man, noon I just said noon noon a Facebook message, she didn't respond. Um, but I just need to hint that. Who had a standout M P V? Like y'all 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 named a couple of them and I talked and I actually talked to look most of them, but except noon and I'm trying to get up with Stan the Man. if I do another day of shooting, I'm gonna try to get up with Stan the Man. But anyway, I digress. Uh in Wilmington, like who who in Describe them, some of the standout MPV the moment. I gotta say, Big Rod. I man. like Big Rod. The yellow was just the yellow. Was, Bumblebee I, yellow. That was yeah. That, he had to get that done. He, he was nasty. That was, that didn't come like that. You know what I mean? So for that that color yeah. to be, you be like, wow, that was, that was different. You know what I'm saying? You had a light blue on the ride too, but I like I like that yellow. Yeah. That Bumblebee, that yellow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Big Rod was stood cool. out. Bad part about it though, if you creeping, it ain't no such thing as creeping. Nah, not that's, no big rock. Rock. <laughs> that's big rock. That's big rock. I know you over there. I can rock. And for him to be, for him to be like six seven. How tall is he? Like man, six seven. Rock, man, about six nine. Yeah, twelve or something. That's man. Big, which big makes sense. Big what up, baby? Yeah, it makes sense for him to have a van. But I'm just saying, he's a big guy, a yellow van. Like you gonna know who that is? Yeah. Shouts to um, shouts to um, Slick Ride too, man. Yeah, Slick Ride, yeah. Slick Ride had a nice. This was too. nice too. Yeah, he had a kit. Yeah, yeah a kid on his. Yeah, like his kid was jumping. So, yeah, shouts out to him. And, and I, I got to say, all three like Keith Rose too, man. I didn't even know that was him. Like when people start saying what what the joint he had, I was like, oh, that was Keith Rose that had that car. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. 
What up, Big Keith? Big shout. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how so how 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 influential were the mixtapes back in the days? Mm. Like like getting a mixtape, throwing it in the whip. How influential was the mixtape back in the days? Like throwing in like 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 jumping in like whatever how? TV, whatever and. On my end, I'm, I know Kai got a lot to say on how influential mixtapes were. Um, yeah. On my end, I lived, at one time I was on Grace Street, shout out to the North. And on that side was Lil Johnny and Hard Rock. You know what I'm saying? To mm -hmm. me, that was so influential to hear Hard Rock on a mixtape, right? Dissing Ron G, who was a New York DJ. Like, you would hear him saying, Ron G, come get this work. And then Ron G respond to him. So that kind of connects the the New York Wilmington situation. Yeah. Cause he would actually talk about like things going on in New York. Ron I mean um Hard Rock, which was big for me. I was like, yo, he really dissing this dude from New York City. And Ron G would say something back in another tape like a month later. And I'm like, yo, what's really going on? They really know each other. So to me, Hard Rock was this big DJ to me who lived down the street. You know what I mean? So that that was so influential. And then Kai start, I mean, I don't even know when he started, but I remember, you know, you would, you know, the man who ever had the mixtapes would have him. And he have him, you know, Ron G number two, Kid Capri, eight, bump, and then at the end of that jump, you start seeing Kashini, number one, whatever date it was. Like, oh, okay, you have hard rock, Kashin. I'm like, who Kashin, let me get that. That's when I really start hearing the blending situation. That's what's really going down. Yeah, the mix. I think the mixtapes was the internet for for the DJs back then, man. For for DJs, definitely, I believe that uh, for people, it was more like, oh, I'm getting music. I love it. I don't have to pay all this money to go to the store because the albums were high back then. You know, mm -hmm. you might pay nineteen dollars for an album. I mean, it's only two or three songs, and we got paid nineteen dollars for them songs. But having all the songs on one tape. For ten dollars, and you might get two for fifteen. You know what I'm saying? Or you buy three, get one free. You know what I'm saying? Riding around, uh, definitely had Mr. Freeze records, but the mixtape thing was serious. Like he said, though, dealing with a lot of mixtape DJs in New York, it was competitive. You know, uh, a lot of mixtape DJs got. Uh, well, my own, they still got it, but they had a little salt in their mouth uh, for me anyway, because a lot of them would come down here and do shows, and they would want me to play whack music before they go you on. They wanted me to play go-go music or reggae or some whack music so that when they come on, they, the they can play the hits. And that ain't the game. I'm, I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. You know, no disrespect to you, but I'm hungry. I'm trying to get my name out too. So right. I don't need to be putting in bad energy or negative energy towards people playing the crazy music. They're looking like, man, what the hell are you playing? Mm -hmm. But anyway, so the mixtapes became an alley for for us to, to, to duke it out. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you you talk junk, I talk junk. Mm -hmm. I drop blends, you drop blends. But it was all in the, the, the competitive part of, of love for hip hop and music. Not as like I hate you and that like that. Right. You know what I'm right, saying? I'm just trying to get my spot. You right. eating the meat. Right. It, right. You know, it's too much food on the buffet for you to eat all of it. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? And yeah, mixtapes, man. Again, uh, Mr. Freeze Records was real big. My man Miliano, he sold a lot of stuff. Uh, KT. Uh, K Rock and, uh, mm -hmm. and Fresh, they had the jump, mm -hmm. man. Uh, mixtapes is a game changer. Mixtapes mix tapes change a lot of people' uh, income bracket. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying, yo, That's real talk. talk. You buy a mixtape, you buy a, a, say you buy 100 cassette tapes for 20 cent a piece, 30 cent a piece, and you mark them up to $10. You make $9.70 a jump, you know what I'm saying? You sell 100 of them at $10 a piece. You know, that's a thousand bucks. If you sell five hundred ten dollars, that's five grand. You know, you're just getting that money. And it's coming like water because yep. they're gonna buy the mixtapes. Every week guys will come in and buy a hundred dollars over weeks. And the label sending you the promo. And they send oh. The label send you if you become an influencer in that market, yeah. The label gonna send you the records. For, so cause they know what you're doing. They're yeah. gonna send you the they're gonna send you the product. Million dollars clue, prime example. Yeah. That first album they came was just basically a mixtape. You know, the very first joint, the professional that he dropped. I think what he's saying about the label sending you the promo, too, is that the label's like, that's publicity. Yeah. That's advertisement for the yeah. art. And he might sell a little bit over here and do that. But the bigger picture is we're still going to sell. And which they do. Because, you know, just because I get one song from Biggie on a mixtape, I might want his album. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll go to the store and buy the album. But I only bought the album because I heard it on the mixtape. Mm -hmm. You know, and being a DJ, we buy three or four records. You know, we go in the store and buy two or three copies of each one. Even mm -hmm. being a DJ, you know? Yep. That's true. Yeah. Um, people hit the stores. Um, the the Tupac this. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Right. When I drop that, this, <laughs> that was only you can only catch it on a mixtape. When I drop that right I now. remember going to the <laughs> joint and like, yo. Let me hear it. I ain't I haven't heard it. Yo. What mixtape is it on? I need to listen to it. And then you listen to the Tupac this joint and you wonder if it's gonna be a response. We got the response. It was on Stadium Series. Whoever who was doing that? Was that clue? So somebody was doing yeah. Stadium Series. Whoever was doing the Stadium Series mixtape mm. had the response. But it was Tupac talking and Diddy. Like talking, jabbing back. Oh yeah, give it up for the actor. But there was yeah. really no diss. That was, back. Uh, that was a bad boy. That was a bad boy next day. Yeah, it was mixtape. on Stadium Series. That Stadium Series played. Like, it. I think SNS didn't want. But a lot of people probably replayed. Yeah, it. a lot of people did. Yeah, but, the, but originally, I think those are just like I think the bad boy mixtapes. What were they called? Were they just called Bad Boy Mixtape? I think so. So that yeah. was S. Man, Mr. Freeze called me. Mr. Freeze called me. I was driving back and forth to Raleigh. He's like, Yo, you need to get up here. I got something. So you listen two hours of ride. I ride up, hit the joint, mm -hmm. come back with the van. You know, I had the big speaker in the back, the lights on the outside. Hit that joint, hit the block, sold all of them. Yeah, I had two hundred copies. So I sold two hundred. Hmm. Talk a little bit more about the Mr. Freeze. Oh, band. okay. The Mr. Freeze van looked kind of kind of rough, man. Uh, you know, we it's a stolen wheel. So a lot of people didn't even realize this. At one time, I didn't have license to, to, to ride around and sell it, but I actually had a business license. I actually had a permit and everything mm -hmm. to, to, to go around and sell them. We had the building. Then I had a permit to be in the car too, but in the I mean in the van. But in the beginning, you know, we, I got it off the rip. But eventually, I got the stuff. But the van was dope, man. Um, I probably had a system in there, Altec, uh, about two thousand watt Altec amp in the back. I had JBL speakers in the back, four four fifteens in the thing, some Prowns. I meant some uh, tweeters. The speaker was probably about that big, man. Out the back, the whole back. I could plug into it. My DJ set. Had a little, I had a converter in the bottom of the seat. Had a flip joint with the lights on the outside. You could flip it, and then you know it was right, man. I go to all the freak needs. I go to uh, bike fest, and uh, we get that paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yo, and he was so real. That's my dude, man. Shout I tell you, man. Mr. I take that joke of the like I said, the markup. You might only pay twenty cent a tape. He buy a thousand tapes. You know what I'm saying? Add that up. You know what I'm saying? That's nothing. So we, I go back. I sell. I might sell a thousand or two thousand tapes in, in like a month, or, or or maybe less than half a month. Cause I might sell a couple hundred a day, depending on where I'm at. I go to uh, A&T Homecoming, I sell out. And so I come to him, and I have a whole wad of money. And I count it out. Here you go, man. He just take the money give me half. <laughs> I'm like, yo, dang. Because sometimes he might give me more than half. He might say, here, man, here's, here, here, here's a bonus for you. You know what I'm saying? Because he ain't got number 20s in it. I was yeah. like, yo, that's crazy. That's you know what I'm saying? And it's loyal, like being loyal. When you when you doing stuff with people, man, loyalty goes a long way, man. I always took him his money back, and he'll tell you. Yeah. You know, and then if something come out, I always make sure he had it. Like working on the radio station, like you said, and also being a DJ. Sometimes record labels will come and they'll hand you something. You know what I'm saying? They want you to pub it, but you know, I, I, I might give it to him. He might give it to me before we give it to you or somebody else. Cause we get, cause we have a relationship. Or I might give it to you before I give it to him, depending on the relationship. Mm -hmm. So I will call him up like, yo, I got these acapellas from Biggie. I'm doing spec mixes on acapellas from Biggie. My man just dropped, me, sent me the dat tape. What you want me to do? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll make a mix and then put that out there. Yo, how the hell you got that? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Well, how you get it clean? How, how you get, get it like clean? that? How you get it clean? Yeah. yeah. So the mixtape game is like that. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother. That's a whole. Nother, that's that's something else. Yeah. That right there is a whole nother. Right. I'm a holler at you. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, but it, that's yeah. crazy. Shout out to the folks that was really doing it, man. That, that was running mixtapes like Mr. Freeze Records yeah. in Wilmington and Raleigh. What was the spot on, um, it was a spot I used to get like the, the, the uh, it was like on Kerr. It was that little School Kids. No. Not no, School Kids. Not, on the corner, my man had it. It was up from, it was a little bit. Across from Scotsman. It's Catacorn from Scotsman. Scotsman. Yeah. Scotsman. Yeah. Who had Ooh. that? Was that Slick Rod? Was that Slick Rod spot? Uh, one, of them, one of them brothers had that spot out there. They sold tapes too. Yeah, I don't know who I that was. I forgot who had though. that tape out there. I don't know who owned it. I know you're talking about, though. Yeah, they used to do it right in front of you. You know, they had the masters. I remember I used to Oh, yeah. They were zipping. Yeah, they're zipping right there. Yeah. Telex. I had telex. The, telex, telex. the Telex machines, one in and dub off three, or one in and dub off one. Put it on fast or put it in reverse. Yeah, I, yeah, I love oh, that. Man. Telex. Yeah. yeah, I'm on it. <laughs> so, yo, I, I, yo I, I still talk to my man. Uh, 
I still talk to DJ Juice. Yeah. Uh, I talked to him, you know, man, greatest mix, greatest blend DJ, man. Mm -hmm. It's a few. I talked to Doo Wop. Uh, I hit Ron. I talked. I try to call Ron G. Uh, you know, just just hitting people because the way technology is now, we can really do something. You know what I'm saying? Because you can reach more people now. But yeah, man, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Definitely like to shout out all the, the, the people like you say, uh, SNS, Craig G, Dog Time, Dirty Harry. You know what I'm saying? Man. S in North Carolina now. Yeah, he in Charlotte. Yeah, he in Charlotte. It's always big. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Billy Bill too, man. I ain't gonna leave my man Billy Bill out, mm -hmm. cause he hot. The, the amazing Billy Bill. He hot. I, I like I like Billy Bill, man. Who's Billy Bill? She do. Uh, William Gardner. Uh, go to go to uh, uh, Instagram and check him out, man. He hot, man. I'm telling you, like far as being a blend, uh, uh, actual mixtape DJ. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. He worked in the Mister Freeze downtown, in in, in Raleigh. In Raleigh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, he nice too. All right, so let's talk about '90s Castle Street, the strip. It was just a spot, man. It was like, like to me, like the late eight, the late eighties, the spot, and Kashin could probably help me out with this. Late eighties, I just remember like elementary, middle school, junior high, everybody was at Greenfield Lake on Sundays. Oh, you know what I'm saying, man. Like, we, so Greenfield Lake was crazy. They what? had the totem, like crazy. the totem pole. That joint was all right in the front. You know, crazy. it wasn't hidden. Like, nah. the, where you know where you come in with the um. With a, or the tennis court set. Yeah. That was DJ Slide. Imagine. Fire disco. Flooded. On smoke Sunday. disco. Free. Zodiac. This is free. Yo, they pull out the speakers. The whole. It's free. It's flooded. And the DJs, man. That Number black dope. folk. Free. Yeah, hanging free. out. People eating. Drinking. Yeah. You got to drive your car through there slow. All that. That's, that's Greenfield. So something happened. A big fight happened. No disrespect to nobody on here. The Marines came through because we always had that Wilmington versus the Marines situation. That's how it is in Jackson. So Marine, yeah, so Marines came yeah. through and it was a big fight, jumped off. And so they Greenfield Lake the City kind of shut that down. Like, y'all can't come out here like this on Sundays. So that migrated to Castle, Castle Street. So you talking about Friday night, Saturday, Saturday night. night, sometimes Sunday night if you ain't got to work on Monday, like, strip crazy. Crazy. Like from French fifth. Off. To like 13. Crazy. And and but Castle wasn't Castle without booties. Facts. Hey, that joker got some money, man. That joker made, hey, booty, you made some booty. money, booty. Shout out, Shout out to, to booty. booty. You made some money. I need a loan. Mr. Gus, <laughs> his, his brother Gus. Nah, uh, salute. Mr. Dave, they daddy. You know what I'm saying? Man, his burgers be that thick. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. So you had you had that, you had <laughs> booties, you had um C and J Chris. Yes. Um, yeah, my man Chris, yep. What else? What was that on the Sellers. other end? Sellers. 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 Sellers was on 13th. 13th. The and then back down here, uh, my man had a spot down there too that was jumping back in the day a little bit. Um, Tony. Tony. He had a little pool hall right there. Yeah. That was a little later though, but yeah. that was in like the late late 90s, early 2000s. You had Teen Scene, the first time I ever seen. Yeah, Teen Scene. Teen jumping. Scene, first time I seen um, uh, uh, Biz Markie, TJ Twan. Yeah. Came to Teen Scene. Um... Club Ebony was there, on on it was just popping, and that when I when we say that we talking about it's like it's also the mecca when the lights are when the sun is out too, yeah. So you got to think about Castle Street being a mecca to the south side, just like Fourth Street was the mecca to north side, and the things they had going on on the north side, like having a, a old movie theater, and at one time it was a jazz cafe. That was man, you don't know nothing about the manor, man. You talking about yeah, the, the manor, all that stuff. Ooh. Yeah, so you got that on North. The dollar movie the on South Sunday? was Castle Street. Yeah, so I'm saying. The dollar so movie South. on Sunday? Oh, yeah, stop it. That's why I saw That's why I saw a lot of money <laughs> on it. But that's what I'm, I'm just saying, like, Castle, you would leave the manor Sunday evening, yep. Saturday evening, and hit Castle Street. Castle. I'm talking about pull out a chair yeah. and just sit there and just be like, oh, man, oh, man. You, you about a couple laps. Yeah, you know people would do their laps or whatever. Like, oh, who caused that? You have to be right now. You can't have no right. You can't car. come up there with no mess. You have, if your car raggedy, park it on Side Street, on Six, Seven, Eight, or Ninth, one of them streets, and walk the castle and see. You can't. Down. You can't be coming up there with your chick on the side either, because yeah, don't everybody that. up there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so don't you do creeping that. and cheating. Don't, don't even do come that. up there. Yeah, don't. Come or if you do, don't get out the car. Sit in the car with the crossover. Crossover castle. Or change cars <laughs> with your homeboy or something. <laughs> crossover. Crossover <laughs> castle. Just keep going. I know you up here. You heard me. Yeah. Cell phone yeah. biggest as dag on mailbox. <laughs> yeah. And for real, like, and people say what they say, and we clown, but you got to say the center of that entertainment, man. 
was definitely 1111 Castle Street. That's the Sportsman's Club. That's what we can club. say what we want to say. People say, well, why, you know, have they renewed it? And when they, you know, have, have they upgraded? But when we talk about 1111 Castle Street, you're talking about some real live major bands going through yep. there in the 80s. You're yep. talking about in the 80s, the late 80s, where they have to literally change their status uh, as a club to non-profit because they they doing a million. They 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 a million dollar club in Easy. the late eighties, but they changed their status to nonprofit to make sure they start taking care of the community. They doing um, softball games. They got yeah. softball leagues, baseball leagues. I actually, and the reason I'm saying that is because I actually won a sportsman's club scholarship going on the way to school. So you talking about that's ninety one? No, well ninety three when I graduate. I'm winning that, but that's that had been that had already been started in the late eighties, and those scholarships were available. Because they had went to a non-profit status. And they invested in the community. Right. So the, the oldest. club invested in the community. Right. The oldest, the oldest black-owned club, period, is 70 plus years old and still mm. open. It's still open. It's still open. And it's it's a reason why it's still open. It's because, you know, they ain't really play about, they rule, and they still don't. You know what I mean? It's like going to your granddaddy house. You know what I mean? Or your, or your grandmama house. They not, hey, you know what to do when you come in here? You know, you got you got a dip or you got to leave. So you know, people clown and you know, the young people clown. But they've been here seventy some years, and they always go to. They got the bus station up there too. All that yeah. stuff up there. Yeah, the that bus was, stations up there. That was the hub. Everything. That was the hub. Did that did that influence you to start doing your your? That's probably all topic, but I'm just curious. Did that influence you to start investing in other people and doing scholarships? Um, you winning that scholarship. Did that have me winning that scholarship and several others won was was a main component of me giving back because I don't think combined with Boys and Girls Club, Community Boys and Girls Club, and the Sportsman's Club, and the um, sisters, the ISIS sisters, and, you know, a couple of uh, Masonic uh, folk and, you know, alumni, Williston alumni. If I wouldn't have got a combination of those, those scholarships, I wouldn't have went to school. I wouldn't have had money to go to school, not the school I went to. Cause I was going out of state, so yeah, I think it's very important, and I think it's very important that those organizations like that have some type of, you know, ph philanthropic duty to help to help youth out. Because you know, is Wilmington is bigger than Wilmington is not bigger than the world. You know, the world's there's a big world out there, and and I think when you give kids a chance to go see it. You know, it's it's an amazing experience when you get to go see it and, and walk out and be like, oh, you know, it was big for me to go see, to be just to be in Raleigh and see Mr. Freeze records because <laughs> I've I've been like this. I know we got Mr. Freeze, but then I go to Raleigh downtown because um, we went to this legislative thing and around the corner downtown was Mr. Freeze records. And I was like, oh, it's Mr. Freeze records, and I actually you know bought a tape out of that. It's like so, it's like big. That was big for me to know that. That one downtown was like, phew, yeah, like yo, far as you can look, records and tapes. It kind of expands your mind, but yeah, I, I think I think that was that was a that was a uh, a catalyst to help me to help other people. Yeah, on scholarships, man. What, what, whatever happened to Michael Jordan? Anyway, that's another question. Let's, go. Let's keep. He went to Laney. That joker just want to give away some shoes, man. Yeah, go, go, go somewhere else, man. I ain't gonna dog Mike. I ain't gonna dog Mike. No, I'm just saying I ain't dogging him. I, 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 spade to spade, I love him though. No, yeah, yeah. About Laney. He's yeah, I'm dogging with him. With oh, Laney. Laney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Mike, you need to do something for your Mike. Down here. Mike, I love. I you. think it's, it's it's coming. It's a lot of things coming. We we do you. we do take a chance. We do take punches at Mike, but I think a lot of stuff we see. We're actually looking at, but there's a lot of things he does that we don't see. It's a lot of stuff he does for Community Boys and Girls Club that yeah. they don't talk about. That they don't talk about. Yeah, okay, yeah. you know, he does like that uh, ten to twenty thousand dollars Christmas for the kids, and a lot of people don't. We don't talk about it because. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff that you know you're gonna you're not gonna see, and I think you're gonna see a, a lot of difference in that. Man, I don't want to see a Michael Jordan building, man. I want to see Mike. Yo, you I deserve it, Mike. Happen. You I deserve it, Mike. You deserve it. You deserve to happen. have a building here. You deserve it. He deserve it. I think it's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't right, see so a Mike Dillon. Yeah, I touched on a couple. Of, so what? So what clubs in Wilmington, like in the '90s, haven't y'all talked about? Or what's what were some of the you know, influential clubs where you would have had to pull up in a nice whip to? Or New World, one hundred percent. A club yeah, in the '90s too. Yeah. Uh, over yeah, there by Telehomes. What that club over there by Telehomes by the store? 
Not Zanzibar. Yeah, Zanzibar. 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 Hey, you didn't have to pull up, but Zanzibar was jumping too. Oh yeah, for real. Zanz- uh, and then uh, what's the other club down the street? The Seahorse over there on the South Side. Oh, on Dawson. On Dawson, it was a couple of spots, man. Those are like little hole in the wall. They still were clubs, but the it's club like, was New World, man. That jump was like a spaceship, like a spaceship in the middle of the country, man. You talking about in the nineties, man? Hollywood like, Tony too. That's who. That's Hollywood who, Tony. Yeah, he was a DJ. You talking about some cats from DJ. the country? Yeah. Put this club South Side to um, Mike Ballard. Yeah. Shot that's Weebo brother. You know what I mean? Yeah. Shots to Weebo and his family. That was a part of their family. Those cats were from the country. Yeah, it's John John Bryan. John yeah. Bryan's the senior, the dad. And yeah. You got uh, Hollywood Tony. I was a resident DJ with Hollywood Tony. You know, you got uh, Shots to Lonzo. Teresa. He did yeah. a lot of promotion. Lonzo Mitchell, Lonzo Mitchell did a lot. Uh, Zoe, Zoe that was did. my neighbor. What was the club in E-Town that we used to go to? That's oh. Chocolate City. No, no, E-Town. That was uh, New World. No, no. E Town was actually DJ there too, man. What's the name of that club? I E-town. thought it was Chocolate City. No, nah, Chocolate City was New World because that's when Lon and um, Sunny, okay, Lon and Sonny, Sonny on it. Shout out to them, Big Line. Yeah, yeah, they own they own Chocolate City. But E Town was uh, it was a club in E Town. I used to DJ at too, my man. He um he a dad going Bell's Bondsman down there, James. God, what's the name of that club, man? We forgot the name of that club. That club would always I would be nervous because like we we meet at the Burger King, and then hit cross the bridge, and I'm <laughs> like, man, who gonna drive back? Oh yeah, hey, you know they always had the, <laughs> they always had the speed though? traps, man. They always had the speed traps and, the, and the, 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 the stops, you know, where they check your license. On oh, eighty-seven, and, man. And yeah, yeah, they don't play seventeen. Yeah, they don't play. Oh, no, eighty-seven man. was seventy-six. Yeah, seventy-four, seventy-six. They did eighty-seven. You, oh man, uh, eighty-seven was stars. That's at Medelco when you went down the stars. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Stars yeah. jumping too, man. Yeah, crazy. But nineties, <laughs> man, hands down, had to be new. New world. world. It wasn't nothing like we talking about live coverage, rump shaker video. You know what I mean? Thousands of dollars being thrown. Yeah, that was crazy. That was big. And you had to have a ride when you pulled up. Like, you had to, yeah, you had to have a ride. Yeah, you can't just yeah. be out there looking crazy, man. You, well, you got park down on right. the dirt road and come in. <laughs> yeah, by the time you get to up from the dirt road, you got mud all on your shoes yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah. But nobody can see them inside, though. Yeah. The pitching booth. And then you, yo, so it's over now, but you had the upstairs VIP area, you know what I'm saying, where you play cards. Yeah. You being there after the club closed, you still playing cards. You still up in that joke. You up in there at yeah. 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock the next morning. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock the next morning. <laughs> yeah. Playing cards. Sometimes 24 hours, you go up there Friday, don't come out to, come out to Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, serious, man. I talk to John all the time, though. John, John. The um the junior, the son from the, um, the guy that owned mm-hmm. the world. I talk to John a lot. What uh, whatever whatever not asked whatever what what about either hip hop car culture or just like nineties Wilmington culture have I like that's kind of tied in uh, have I because y'all y'all thought I didn't know anything about Greenfield like y'all that yeah, that. that age that age gap and then I think me not living in town is you know what I mean like my whole my introduction <laughs> to a lot of that stuff was like. Castle, Castle Street was kind of my gotcha. introduction to like, and the only reason I really know about that is because I think Stan the Man was dating Leatrice, and I think Leatrice was like the front to uh, on it. I don't think Stan the Man could like own the club. Mm-hmm. So when they had Dominic's, you know, you know we used to, we went out. She she like ran it, and so I remember. But Castle would be crazy though. Yeah. It'd be crazy during that and time. And then, then it went for me. It went from Castle to. I am uh, not the I am. What was across from the hill? The hill. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. The hill was yeah. jumping, though. The hill, the hill was, was dope. Jumping. The hill was jumping. That's across from the Alley Hall, right? Yeah. yeah. And in mm-hmm. Alley Hall, you rent it out. But I, I like to send a shout out to Standing Man, too. Man, I was just thinking about something. We was talking about like the, the investments and stuff like that. Man, people don't have so much money going through our hands, man. That's Imagine if we would have invested like it was Stan the Man, the first dude I seen that with CD, the playing. CDJs. That's a one playing, man. He the first dude I seen with CDJs. Like, yeah, he went really playing, playing on CDs. Like invest your money, Stan. Man. Tripping. Yeah, like I, he the first dude I seen play on the CDJs, like real talk. Like I was yeah. like, yo, what are you doing? He's like, yo, he playing with C. I was like, what? That was one of the first guys I seen doing that. And then then people start buying CDJs and playing off them. And hey, do you yeah. remember when Slide them used to be in the middle of the field over there by Hanover? And he used to jump up on the his 13th. car with them Prince boots on the and, them, and them tight pleather pants. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, shout out Sly, what up? Sir, I seen, I seen, I seen them go. I seen them at the ML. The rolling, the, 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 before clubs, the rolling skating rinks was a thing. Too. Yeah, that was oh, a skating sports rink. world. Sports That's Sly. Yeah. 
Slide Disco. <laughs> hottest man. Real hottest talk. man. It's a lot of stuff. Like I say it all the time. If it's no hottest DJ, no hottest man, no fire disco, ain't no big B because that's yeah. We, you're be watching weird. that. You're yeah. watching the business part of it. Like even though they party and they, you know, they threw great parties, but do you watch the business of it? How they came in and was like, we want all the door. All of it. We want all the drink, and you gotta pay us to be there. Yeah, like it was. They was getting to the bridge, man, I and it wasn't like money with them. Jokes. I watched <laughs> Hannes and Sly and them come in and had a whole crew. Like they got a crew to set up. Yeah, they got a crew to do the lights. Yeah, they got a crew. They got a mic man. All they did was walk in and play. And play. And they had a crew. And sometimes they, they have a DJ. On. Sometimes yeah. they have a DJ, and they don't need like Sly, man. You tripping, man? You be in the daggone van sleep. And right. the bus sleep. Right. So you so, so then he advanced like he advanced because that money yeah. was great. He advanced, he hired the DJ. So it's it Sly DJ, yeah. but the DJ wasn't him. It was it might have been somebody like Champ or somebody else that yeah. was playing. And he in the he in the back of his yeah. bus what sleep. Scooter Fresh, the white dude played for him. Scooter Fresh yeah. was a part of the whole Sly team. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's be DJ clear. Kente. DJ Chaos. Yep, Kente. I DJ for Sly too. Yeah. I, man, you had me unloading that bus, man, and, and, and DJ and no me joke. picked up fifty dollars a night. And them cats had... <laughs> That's all right, he had a bus. I salute, though. Real talk. He had the bus. Then yeah. he got the charter bus. Charter bus, like, to this day... He got the same bus. It's got a million miles on it, bro. Yeah, same bus. A million miles. Same he done changed, you know, changed stuff on it. He's got to have they a got the studio in it. The kitchen, the bathroom, the water bed. Same bus. Just painted. <laughs> Yo, yeah. And he just know how to keep his stuff in his... Yeah. And what's crazy about them is, like, they actually... He's actually evolved with the times. So he evolved when stuff evolved. So he'll yep. get the CDJs or he'll get the new he got the range set up. Yeah, he got, he'll he got get all, all that. that stuff. He'll advance. Even if he not DJing, he be like, I already got it. So now you yeah. still got to call him. Like if House of Blues got a special requirement, he, there. he already got the equipment. Yeah. He got the so jump. He got the, the new speakers where he got the, the list. He don't have to lift them. He got automatic lift. They lift him so up. So now he ain't got nobody to pay nobody he, to yeah, set he up. Got, yo, yeah, 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 yo, yo, slide you off. He got the jam. hydraulic joint. Salute. <laughs> and then pick up. And he used. Yeah. He's using more of the the um, technology. Yeah. Technology yeah. as he as it evolves. So you know, salute so salute to those DJs, man, because they actually and, and you got to think about them too. They those DJs had whips. Boy, did he? You know what I'm saying? He had the white Corvette. Whip. Yeah, he had the Corvette and the green BMW. When that joker fell like Sly, Sly had the green BMW, crazy, yeah. and the kitted out white Corvette. Did you see the 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 Camaro, the red Camaro he had? Yeah, he had the red Camaro. Yeah. Like he had, yeah, he had man. Some, yeah, Sly, you you was acting up. Sit down. Somewhere. Which come had the Benz? Like how does had, <laughs> how the, does Benz? had the Benz too? Sit down somewhere, Kenny. <laughs> yeah, they was like they was getting to their bread doing yeah. parties in Wilmington or in the outskirts. Yeah, they, Look, I, I like Sly. I like Sly though. And Smoke Disco, Zodiac, Smoke. Zodiac, Zodiac, you know, their family had a funeral piece. home, they had companies and whatever, he still had good stuff. But Sly was so mean with it, he'd have a party going on the skating ring in Wilmington, a party going on with the skating ring in, in Raleigh, Wallace. a party with Wallace, mm -hmm. and a party with a thing going on skating in Myrtle Beach, and he making 50 bands from here, 60 bands from here, 35,000 from here, and one night, and all he do is just run around and pick them all up. A, I'm, listen, a, I'm telling you, one, two, and three. I know he's yeah. making money like that because I seen that money like that before when I was at the arena mm -hmm. at ten dollars and twenty dollars a head. And you got a thousand people. That's twenty thousand dollars cash. Not playing. I seen that. So me being with Slide, that's okay. He stopped paying me fifty dollars a night. He started giving fifty dollars a night. He started giving me about two or three hundred dollars a night. You know, since so this learning, man, like Big B, you know, Big B was with us, and and yeah. uh, Big B used to just ride around, walk around carrying book bag. But yeah, now, now ain't nothing, move, ain't nothing moving. Now, ain't nothing moving. If Big B don't say it's moving, oh man, see, see, it's a game changer now. He ain't getting no book bag now. He calling the shots. You know what I'm saying? So yo, to he everybody's trying to do something or be something, hey man. Sometimes you got not sometimes all the time you got to humble yourself Thanks. and learn. Yes, you know, you might be at the bottom now, but you are gonna rain and be on top. Just put in your work. Yes, Big B just ride around carrying equipment, carrying a book bag. That's Big yes, B. Yes. You better respect the game. Yeah, you better, you better spend that two hundred dollars an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I stop, man. Big B, so let's end it off with this. Tell your 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 Kashim. Are you talking off camera about Kashim uh, being your in, your influence? Kashim was. I met I met Kashim like I said. It was like my home girl. Like my home girl house. Like she, you know, how people have a platonic friend that's of the opposite sex. Some people don't, <laughs> but this pe this person is really like a friend. We grew up together in church. 
Her name is Chalon. And Chalon had her birthday. It was in the summer. And I don't think he DJed it, but he was just there. That was the first time I met Kai. And then my homegirl, Tasha Thomas, shouts to Tasha Thomas. She over the um, African American Commission. She over the African she sent me a yeah, She over the African American <laughs> Commission. And um, it was like her 16th birthday party at Faces on Queen Street. Yeah. Right next to the, the old All About, right there where KT's was at. You know what I'm saying? It was right there. And he, he was DJing on like up in the air, like in, in some they had him in some balcony DJing. Mm-hmm. And he killed like when I mean killed, I was like, wow. So that's when I started following him. Then I went to school. We knew each other. Look, I'm telling you, and, and I'm not doing this because he's sitting next to me, but he could do a lap in the mall and get stopped every store. God, I mean, that's exactly what he was doing. He'd do a lap in the mall, and he would. They would stop. Kyle, what you doing? Kyle, what you doing? And it wasn't. It wasn't radio. It wasn't radio. It was just he was doing a lot of parties at that time. And I came back home. I moved back home. Uh, two thousand, two thousand one, and he was doing a lot of the the parties, and he was doing more recording stuff. And so I would see him, and we linked heavier when the boom boom room opened. That now, that's that's two thousand, that right? Crazy. So two thousand, that was I, crazy. I become two thousand now. I'm a street guy, like I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm in the street, you know, what I'm saying doing promotions, street teaming. I'm doing all that stuff, and that's how I met. This is how I met Battle, and this is how I meet um, Sir Charles, all those cats, because I'm street teaming. I got stickers. They got the same stickers I got, so we talking to the same reps, and this is how I meet Cat. Well, not meet them, but Kashin start doing a lot of record things. Boom, boom, room. I'm like, yo, let me go with you. So I'm grabbing records. You know, I got records. I'm always got a book bag because I got stickers or something in the back. I'm gonna give away. I'm getting rid of this and I'm gonna take a picture of it. So I yeah. give something away, take a picture, send it to the label, whatever. And so I'm street teaming like that, and boom, 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 open, and it's crazy, crazy, and and, and crazy. I'm talking mad trash because I'm, I'm I'm rocking with a team that's cool. Shouts to Twan, uh, J Twan was was rocking at the time. But the opening the boom boom room was a major situation, and so at that time, Kai's. I mean, I can't explain to you all the places I've been, but I'm like can records, and I'm just wait. A maybe lot of times, maybe you go going out to the country to that place to way country. down in Lawrence, whatever. To, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Club New York, York. Club New Yo, York. That was jumping. And they, well, you, <laughs> Club New York. You come in on this level and you yeah. have to go down into to a go, basement. You got to go down in the basement to dance Because that's basement. where the, they, everybody dancing down here and, and the DJ and how you get in is up at the, at top. the top. Yeah. And so we talking about doing stuff. My phone don't work out there. All, nothing. Nope, when you nothing. get out there, it's done. You got to get on the phone and call back in. That's when I first got on the radio. I had to call from a, a, lo- a landline back yeah. to the station to do my remote. But we're talking about things being four, five, six in the morning getting back home. Yeah. And... I got like ten dollars, twenty dollars. Not that he gave me twenty dollars, but that's what I got because I ain't want no bread. I'm just trying to learn the craft, and then and that's the best pay. The and, best pay is learning the craft, right? So look, it's paying out now. Yeah, so I'm learning the craft. I'm doing yeah. the radio situation. I'm running the board when he's when some when be paid shots to be paid when be pays out. I'm running the board when he go into the nine o'clock mixtape. We still call it the nine o'clock mixtape. So I'm running the board while he mixing. So I'm learning the board now. You know what I'm saying? And still, like, he coming in with crates. It's crates underneath the other side of the studio. If you go in the studio now, it's, it's cleaned out. But it used to be crates everywhere, along the wall, all that. And he just be picking up. Thank you, Serato. And I was watching him. <laughs> I'm watching him. He's DJing. Yeah, he's on the phone, playing. <laughs> Hang the phone up, still playing. He on the Sky Pager. That's a whole nother thing too, the technology. Oh, he on the sky tail, so I go get me. I'm gonna give me a sky tail. But ain't nobody else got him. So I'm like, well, who am I gonna talk to? I guess I'll talk to Kyle. So yeah. we, you know what I'm saying? It was yeah. stuff like that that influenced me. And so I just sat in the house and, and, and tried to perfect my craft. And then they called one day I got a call from some um from the Dezels at UNCW and the rest was history. They were like, Can you play this event? And that's when I started start playing a lot. And uh, radio is history too, because I was I was hungry enough to want to work like that, and then to to see how can I advance inside of it. And um, I've been blessed, man, one hundred percent. That's yeah. that, that's my turn with that's that was my relationship with Kai, um, and he went through what he had to go through. Yeah. And, and um, like I said, he's um, 
He's, you cannot not mention good DJs in Wilmington without saying hottest and slide. Rest in peace, Zodiac, yeah. uh, Hollywood Tony. You got to mention Kai in that situation because mid 90s, mid 90s, 2000, 2002, he's on top of his game 100%. These are people that I'm looking at that made business, they made DJing business look like it was very lucrative. And it was at that at that time. So when you say that, you have to mention Kyle up there. You have to mention shots to Ashawn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hard Ashawn, rock. Hard Rock. Like I have to, you know, like <clears> I'm <throat> humble. Hard Rock. Like I I've played with Hard Rock before. Later on in life, and I'm like, yo, Rock, like I'm glad I could even be in the building with you to play because I used to look up to you when you was playing. I seen Hard Rock mix, drop an instrumental, walk around the DJ booth. And, and rap. Like, rap. He can rap too. I just and seen come him. back around and finish yep. the song. I was like, this man is crazy. I just seen him. We gonna, we we working on something. I just seen him like, what I'm about, saying, about but three days got, ago. You gotta mention yeah. the cats like that that yeah. was really Hard Rock is the opinion. Shot some of my man Jazz. Yeah, that's my dude. I love jazz, him. Jazz, you know If saying? it wasn't for him, man, it wouldn't be no me. I always say this, Jazz. You know I do, man. Thank you, man. He should let me come to his house. He had 1200s. He had the best of the best at all yeah, times. Yeah. He said, Give me his records. I should keep his records. I said, Keep your records. Three, four months at the time. He had to call me and tell me to bring them back. Yeah, thank jazz, you, man. Jazz did a lot of sound. <laughs> when I was starting out, yeah, Jazz did a lot of sound for me. Um, Elliot, too. Shouts to Elliot. He did Definitely. a lot of sound for me. That's, too. that's my heart. I love you, man. Yeah, Elliot did you a lot. So, me. I mean, Hollywood, like I said, Hollywood Tony was the man out, out in the. Uh, uh, New World, you know what I'm saying? Every, who who ain't want to yep. play there? That's my dude. So you, you gotta you gotta mention those cats. You know what I'm saying? You gotta mention those <clears> cats when you when you say DJs. You know, as we go forward, uh, as, as far as the people are concerned. But Kyle was definitely an influencer at that time. And um, turntablism, you gotta say it. And when turntablism is a whole different thing, it's a whole yeah. different situation. But when you mention turntablism, you gotta say Slim, Slim Deluxe, Slim Deluxe, um, Kai. Uh, all those guys, my man Stevie. I don't know yeah. if you remember Stevie. You remember Stevie? Yeah. Um, White Stevie. Stevie. Nah, I'm kind of back. I kind of backed day. out of the turntablism yeah. for a second, but but I'm back in it. I'm 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 getting back in. It. That's what I told you. Yeah. When I told you I'm hungry, I'm back. So I'm, I got a couple of routines yeah. I'm working on, man. Turntablism is, is a lifestyle. I love it. Yeah. Nah, yeah. shots to nah. Nah, all yeah. that, man. It's, it's nah, so nah. many. So man. those those are people that you have to mention because you know people can go in and rock a crowd. You can do that, and it, it does take some technique and. You know, but when you talk about turntablism, that is definitely the art form. Now, mm -hmm. on the DJ culture, not not necessarily hip hop, but just DJ culture and lifestyle, uh, chalk, uh, Sir Charles. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I'm def sorry. yeah, definitely, definitely, because they like party rockers. Like, Battle, but but yeah. deep, hey, the unknown secret though, Sir Charles hip hop though. Oh yeah, he's straight hip hop. He's yeah, straight, yeah, yeah. He's straight yo. You to get said. in the room with him, man. I bet you anybody he, he outquiz anybody. Shots to said. Yeah, he just said too. I was introduced to these guys yo. by being on the street team. So it was Kyle. Yeah. I was said. And Charles said. ran with the greatest. Like, yeah, a lot of the rap, like yeah. Hip -hop yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Charles is dope. So and, at that time, it was Sir Lux is dope too. It was, it was said, Kyle, yeah. and Sir Charles. And Sir Charles. On the Matter of fact, he was on the station. Yeah, and battle. And battle. Jeff battle too. Jeff battle dope too. Yep. So those are guys I uh, I was introduced to, and you know you take pieces from folks and you add your flavor, but you you definitely want to be professional and, and you want to be entertaining. That's the big thing. So the part you was talking about, like grabbing the pieces, I grabbed a lot of the pieces from Zodiac and Slide and Fire Disco on how to go into club owners. So mm. it's the psychology behind it, and you know, I get a secret up, you know, just because what's given. If I give it, it's, it's something to come back. But I'm just giving it anyway, just for free. You work on, you play on the emotions and the psychology of the club owner, or you go places where you get, that could potentially hold people, mm -hmm. like a restaurant. The restaurant's doing bad; they're going out of business. At night, they still got to pay the bills. You just go to them and say, "Look, man, you just, just give the me mushroom get, like just give me the door, give me the bar. <laughs> you know, yeah. you, you can have the bar. Give me the door. I'll take care of the radio. You take care of the security. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They pay the security. Yeah. You pay the radio. They give you the door. Five hundred people come through. Fifteen dollars a head. You make seventy five hundred dollars. Yeah, radio's gonna cost you about two or three hundred. You make seventy three. Yeah. And walk away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? saying? So they gave me the, they gave me the, the formula. The formula, you know, the mushroom, the uh, well, it was Outback Steakhouse. I mean, yeah, I, I know it was uh, O'Brien's O'Brien Steakhouse, yeah, yeah. and then uh, the arena. The guy at the arena was like he had this the best sports bar ever seen in this city, but his overhead was so crazy he wasn't making money. We were selling fifty cases of Corona, 
50 cases of Heineken, 20 bottles of Hennessy a night. Mm-hmm. He only sell that in a month. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Right. He was selling this a night. You know what I'm saying? You know, in club yeah. owners, they get shanky. Once they, once they figure they got a crowd or whatever, sometimes they be like, look, well, we're going to try something new tonight just to try to spice it up. Because another DJ done went in and say, look, just give me $200, $300 out of right. pocket. Right. Anyway, long story short, this is the, the history of what he was saying about taking from here, from there, from there. So I like to thank uh, the hottest man, uh, you know, slide just for giving me the, and my Barfield, Jonathan Barfield. Oh, man. That's my dude. That's Why the dude say that? that? That's the dude that really Starlight, Starlight, Starlight Entertainment. Starlight Entertainment, <laughs> DJ. He's not, 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 if ain't nobody ever paid me, he paid me. Yeah, I, would do, I would do weddings and everything. Starlight. And, and, and he took me over to the place over there on Queen Street. On Face, yeah. He was the first person that gave me $300 a night. Yeah, face. He made me know what I was worth. Yeah, Jonathan Barfield. And he, I talked to him right now today. Yeah, county yeah. commissioner. Yo, and he had the the best DJ. He did all the weddings, all birthday parties, bar mitzvahs, whatever. He had the best DJing company in in Wilmington, man. Yeah. I used to work with him. Carrying his records. Starlight <laughs> Entertainment. Yep. Yeah. Shout out to my man Brian. Brian, that's Brian got Wilson. it. Yeah, Brian, Brian got it now. Yeah, Brian yeah. got it now. Yeah. Yep. Brian got it now. Yep. That's cool. Man, Dad, you all bringing some memories up, man. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, more time to say who you are, or you know, okay. uh, where people can find you, that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, it's probably not going to be in the documentary, but it's just for editing. Gotcha. Um, I'm Brandon Big B Hickman, B I G G B, uh, programmer for um, program director for WMNX Coast ninety seven point three, uh, on air personality three p.m. to seven p.m. on the big ride home. You can find me on Instagram, B-I-G-G-B-1906. Yeah, I'm Kashim, uh, DJ Kashim. They call me Kashim Remix on all platforms on Instagram, uh, Bigo, Facebook, K-Y-S-H-E-E-M-R-E-M-I-X. And um, I'm a peer support facilities manager working uh supporting individuals in substance abuse, mental health, and reentry from incarceration. I'm in the non-profit sector now. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Setting up some non-profits. Yeah. You know, we got to do all that. You know, got to leave a legacy. So yeah. I'm going to set it up. You good? Good. Yes. Yeah. You good? Cool. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed oh, it. Man, I, I got-